الرحيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. With the name Allah, most gracious, most merciful, we openly bear witness that there's no God except Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And we witness shahidum that there's no God except Allah and Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. He is rahmat al nas. He is the mercy for all the worlds. As-salamu alaykum. Alhamdulillah. I'm always grateful first. I thank Allah for allowing me to become a Muslim. Inshallah, believer. But only Allah knows who the believers are. That's in the Quran. All of us are Muslim. But who are the mu'minuns? Allahu alam. I thank Allah for allowing me to come to Yom al this is congregational prayer, feasible and lost. This is where all Muslim marriage. The Quran is crystal clear. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us clear vision. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So today, inshallah, I was <coughs> looking at people today. Allah allowed me to make Jummah because it almost didn't happen. But the angel came and delivered me. Allahu Akbar. <coughs> The angel delivers all of us, <laughs> whether we know it or not. It's the Malikatus that walk with you. It's in the Quran. It's not you. It's the angels that assist you when you do what is Sarat al Mustaqim. Allahu Akbar. Now, today I was thinking about something that's very, very important to me and to you. We talk about a lot of things in the Quran. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered the Quran to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And we pay a lot of attention to things, and some things we neglect. I want to ask all of you, what organ on the human body did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deliver the Quran? Thank you. Kalbun. Sadora, Kalbun. Right here. That's important. Jibril didn't bring the Quran to his intellect. No. He brought it to the Kalb, Sudur. It's in the Quran. You can check it for yourself. So isn't that important? Isn't that an ayat within itself? Huh. Allah went right to the problem. He delivered the Quran on Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Kalb, his Sudur, his heart. That's the problem for all of us. A lot of waste time. He gets right to the problem. So if we dicker, why dicker Allah who but if we back around, if we think, back around, think, think, ponder, reflect, analyze, think. We have to analyze. Why dicker Allah who but dicker means to ponder, to meditate, to analyze this thing. Like Muhammad So Allah says in the Quran, I just want to share this with you. Allah says in the 10th surah of the Quran, He says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Yala ayyuhu nasu kad ja'at kum, mal idda kum rabikum wa shitha'a ul saduri wa hudin rahmatul mukhminun. You can check it for yourself, 57. All actions. Are we aware of this? Therefore, if the heart is filled with Iman and love, it will produce good deeds. The relationship between true faith and acts, the reason may be why Allah so often describes the believers as acts as they perform, it is the true Iman that really exists in the heart that corresponds to the good deeds. This is interesting. So, and can we prove this? Absolutely. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say about Qal, the Sudori? He said, there's one piece of flesh that if this is good, the whole system is good. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Likewise, if it is corrupt, the whole system is corrupt. This is why a believer must always be Submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The belief of his heart drives him to, it, to do external deeds on this point. 
It is truly believers that guard the inspiration of their hearts. Their deeds will not delay in following whatsoever. The complete recognition of Allah and proper love cannot be cannot be in the heart if it does not have an overruling effect on the outward deeds. That makes sense. If my deeds are haram, then there's something wrong with my color. It's real simple. Your brain is your vehicle for transportation of what you want to accomplish. But the heart sends up the requisition to do whatever you're doing. It's the heart. If the belief is truly in the heart, the deeds will not delay in following whatsoever good. The complete recognition of Allah and proper love cannot be in the heart if the deeds are haram. For this reason, Allah has denied faith for those who do not fulfill its necessary consequences, the absence of faith in the heart. The heart is the driving force behind all actions. So let's, let's look at this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to Prophet Muhammad 1400 years ago, over 1400 years ago, inshallah. And he analyzed the condition of humanity on the earth. Allahu Akbar. And he sent the Quran Kareem to Prophet Muhammad Islam to his khan. Because that's the problem with us. That's the problem with humanity. That's the problem with the United States. The problem with all of them is the khan. We have to cleanse the call away from racism, greed, dominance. Huh? That's a disease. Not in the brain, but in the color. It's deeper than the brain. Your heart pumps up oxygen, blood to your brain. When you leave here, go look at a book on medicine. You'll find it out for yourself. So the heart, the sudora, is in control. That's why it's the center cavity in your chest. So the heart feeds the brain blood and oxygen so it can function. You don't get any oxygen in your brain, you get what you call a stroke or a heart attack. Real simple. We can back this up medically. So the organ that's in charge of the whole system is the sudur, the qalb. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. The relationship between true faith and acts may reason. <coughs> While Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks so delicately and directly of the heart. If the heart is good, the deeds will be permissible and good. If the heart is decayed and stained from shaitan, it will produce haram deeds. It will destroy humanity. So if we analyze what's happening in the world, we can see that the world has a problem with its heart. And the Quran is a purification for the common. It is sudori. It is a shifa. shifa. Shifa is not only a healing, but it prevents future decay. Allahu Akbar. Today, we came to Juma today. Allahu Akbar. Allah put it in our, once again, not our brain, but in our heart that put it up to the brain. I'm going to Juma today, inshallah. I know it's Good Friday. And the brain probably say, Friday is always good for Muslims. And it is. In America, we call this Friday. Friday comes from a Greek mythological god called Frigida. Check it for yourself. Every day of the week, Monday, Lunas, Saturday, Saturn, Sunday, Sunday, Thursday comes from, the, comes from Thor. You heard of Thor in Greek mythology, the, the god of Thor? Those are pagan gods. Every one of them. Every day of the week in America comes from a pagan god from Europe. That's how we got it. But in Al-Islam, this is Yom Al-Juma'ah. This is Congregational Prayer, Fisa Allah. But this is Good Friday for Christians. And we respect them because Prophet Muhammad Islam said, respect all people of faith. Allahu Akbar. Allah. We have relatives that today are caught up in Good Friday. We have to respect them. 
Muhammad disrespected no one. In fact, the Hadith said he wouldn't pass anyone without a smile. Allah Akbar. That's Muhammad. Basharun mithalukum. Bashar, good example of humanity. So our, our, our trip today to Juma is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah put it in your heart, in your heart. All good comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all you got to remember. All bad comes from myself. Allah only does good. He only gives good. He only accepts good. You can't even give anything out of He won't accept it. So if you had a good thought today, if you got up and said, I'm going to Juma, that's from Allah. Allah allowed you to come to Juma. And what happens at Juma? The hadith says that when we come to Juma with the right niyatun, some of us receive four to five hundred blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. Is there anyone in here that couldn't use four or five hundred blessings? I don't think so. We need all the barakats we can get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O oh, mankind, they have come to you a direction from your Rabb, a Qibla. Our Qibla, we face the Qibla when we make our Salat. We have a direction for prayer. We don't pray in any direction. Do you know Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was one time, he was praying, his Qibla was towards Jerusalem? Did you know that? It's in the Quran. Oh yes, Allah says, let me turn you to a Qibla that will please thee. It's in the Quran. So that means Allah changed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu direction, his thinking. And he's changing our thinking. We have to change our thinking. We have to analyze our thoughts to become better people. O oh, mankind, they have come to you a Qibla from your Rabb. And in it is a Shifa, a healing for the diseases that are in your heart. And those who believe a guidance and a mercy. So if we accept the Quran into our hearts, not only does it cleanse our heart from arrogance and greed and racism and hating each other for no reason at all, that's shaitan. Allah said in the Quran, shaitan says, surely I am an avowed enemy to all humanity. That's in the Quran. So shaitan wants to separate the Muslim community. He wants them fighting. He wants Shiite fighting Sunni. Ahmadiyya is fighting Sunnis. During the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallam, there wasn't no, there wasn't any Shiites, there wasn't any Sunnis, there wasn't any Ahmadiyyas, there was no Wahhabism, there wasn't any of them except Muslims. This is a fact. So where did they come from? Not during the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And each one is pulling each other, fighting, fighting. That's how right. Muslims are supposed to be unified. Not execute. Allahu Akbar. Allah. O mankind, they have come to you a direction from your Rabb and a healing for the diseases that are in your hearts. And for those who believe, those who believe, if you believe it, it is a huden. And it is rahmatul. It is a huden and rahmatul. It is a mercy if you believe it. So there's two things. The Quran is going to clear up my heart. That's what Allah said here. I'm going to take care of the problem in your heart, Rahman. I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to show you what's in your heart. The Quran will show you what's in your heart. There's no room in your heart for diseases in my word. So something got to go. Allah ain't going anywhere. So Allah's words occupy your heart, your color. And all the funk and the gunk has to come out of there. Ain't no room for it. Two forces cannot occupy the same space at the same time. Something has to go. Allah ain't going nowhere. <laughs> yes, brother, you're right. Allah ain't going nowhere. So all the funk I got up in my heart got to step. Real simple. But you have to open up your heart for that. So the Quran can go in and do the shifa and clean it up. There's a hadith where two angels saw Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu the hadith said they opened up his heart and they cleansed it. You ever read that? It's a hadith. That's a sign. 
Allah is showing you that the real problem with humanity is not the brain, it's your hearts that are soiled. And if we believe, then we get guidance. Does that make sense? First, I believe in Allah. Now he says, you go this way. You don't go this way no more. I get guidance. So I don't step, I stay on Surah Al-Mustaqim. Everybody's trying to get on Surah Al-Mustaqim. That's the whole purpose. Oh, Allah, put me on Surah Al-Mustaqim. I'm tired of walking on, on these other, Broad Street. Shaitan is on Broad Street. No, I want to be on Surah Al-Mustaqim. That's the whole purpose of your prayer, your fatiha. Oh Allah, show me Saratul Mustaqim. And not only that, keep me on Saratul Mustaqim. Allahu Akbar. So we get guidance. The name of this message is Hadith. Guidance. <laughs> we need guidance. That's the whole purpose of the human being. Because we can't see. Allah is El Basir. Allah sees everything. Basir means he encompasses everything at one hit, one time. We can't even see with glasses on, okay? So it's not that, about that kind of vision. He's El Basir. That's what Basir means, to encompass everything in one glance, to have complete control of everything. So he gives us guidance, and then he gives us Rahman, Rahim, mercy. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So now we get mercy when we come correctly. When we open up our hearts and let the Quran Kareem come in, Allah sends mercy to you. Allahu Akbar. So, we need to understand that the real organ that's in charge of your whole system is your sonor, is your kalim. That's what we need to understand. We need to do something to purify the heart. When shaitan rises up in us, we need to control shaitan and purge him out of our system, especially the heart. Our heart is, is our key to getting to Jannah. The brain assists the heart. The brain, will, the heart will say, uh, you, you, it's, it's time to make Fajr prayer. You missed Fajr yesterday. Are you going to make Fajr prayer today? The heart talks to you. All of us have a voice that talks to us. Every one of us. Are you going to make Fajr prayer today? This morning? He sends it up to the brain. The brain says, yes, I'm going to make prayer today. Inshallah. So the brain sets out to find a way to make sure that he gets up and makes that prayer. Now, the true believers, now the brain will get up and say, I'm going to set that clock at 4.55, so I make fire. And when it comes off, inshallah, we wake up, inshallah, we make the prayer. But the believer, there are some who are so committed that there's a clock in their qalb. Some of us don't need a clock to get up for fire prayer. I'll bear witness. When Fajr rolls in, your heart says, it's time to get up, brain. The eyes come open. You come to consciousness. So there's a clock in your cutting. The brain only helps you devise your system. But the heart requisitions the brain to do what Allah wants it to do. We as Muslims... We have to look at the Quran, look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did when he gave it to Prophet Muhammad because Muhammad represents humanity. He represents all of us. It's Muhammad. He gave the Quran on his heart. If it was a mental problem, Allah would have put it on his brain. No, Jibril brought it to his call. And it's very simple. You hear language with people talking, conversation. I heard two... two uh, Young people were talking the other day. Two thugs. They were thugs. I knew what they were. I'm from the street, so I know what a thug talks like. One thug said to the other one, man, I was getting ready to, 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 to dust him. I know what dust, you know what dust means too. And the other one said, why? Wow. He says because he was talking, his words was good, but his heart wasn't in it. That's what they say on the street. So even in his darkness, he knows Quran. He knows Quran. You can't even lie unless you use Allah's truth. He knows Quran. So it's the heart. We have to examine our hearts, brothers and sisters. That's where the problem is. Let us think about that when we make the short duo.
ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا دراسة من النار آمين. السلام عليكم. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صلّى على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم. اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد. كما بركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في الأمين إنك حميد مجيد آمين الله أكبر. Translation: Oh Allah, exalt Muhammad and the followers of Muhammad as Thou did exalt Abraham and the followers of Abraham. Oh Allah, bless Muhammad and the followers of Muhammad as Thou did bless Abraham and the followers of Abraham. In all the world, surely Thou art praised and magnified. Amin. Alhamdulillah. Allah Akbar. We're not going to hold you long today, inshallah. It's not necessary. I have great respect for your time. <clears throat> and we thank Allah for all of you that have come to Yom Al-Jum'ah to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I just want to share a few more concepts with you, and we will conclude, inshallah. I just want to talk briefly about what's going on right now. Our relatives... Many Americans, there's 320 million people in America, and 10 to 12 million of them are Muslims. The rest are Christian and Jews, Yahudis as well. Most of them, in fact, there's a parade. That's why I was late. There's a parade uh, where I was coming from. <laughs> I had to get through the parade. They're celebrating what they call Good Friday. Okay? And as I said, Friday is nothing but a Greek mythological goddess. Here, I just want to sh share with you something that's important, I think, because of our, our family. The information, briefly, about Easter, it's a Christian pagan holiday, and I disagree. It's not Christian. It's pagan. Let me get right to it. It's not Christian. It's pagan. However... There are good Christian people that are operating without true knowledge of what they're celebrating. So I have respect for that. It's supposed to celebrate the resurrection of our dear Prophet Isa alayhi salam. It is the most important day for Christian religion. Not Christmas, Easter. The story of Easter comes from a religious sense, comes from the Bible. The gospel tells us that Jesus was crucified on the cross on Good Friday. That is Haram. That's a lie. And was resurrected three days later on Easter Sunday. As stated, if you count from 11 a.m. Friday to dawn Sunday, Sunday, you don't get three days. You get almost two days. So right away, there's inconsistencies. Right away. However, when we examine everything that is associated with this holiday, we will see that just like Christmas, it has become supplanted with pagan ideas. That's the whole thing. As was stated in the Quran, teaches us that the prophet Isa did not die on the cross. Consequently, there was no resurrection if he, wasn't, if he didn't die on the cross. It has a symbolic meaning. When we analyze what's happening during this season, people spend a lot of what? Money. Money. Thank you. It's interesting. They took our dear love Prophet Isa alayhi salam. May Allah give him Jenna. I love Isa. He's my brother. He's your brother. They took him and they pagan fied two days. First they said he was born December the 25th. Let's have a celebration. And you spend what? Money. Now they go to Easter in May and they say he died on the cross. He resurrected. So now you, what do you do? You spend money. You see the connection? See, shaitan leaves footprints. You hear the term, follow the money? Follow the money. So, he makes money at the end of the year, in December, because you buy presents. And he makes money in April, when you buy presents. This is shaitan. <clears throat> this is the concept of how they 
This is the disease I was talking about in the first part of the Qutbah. That's a disease. Anytime you take a righteous prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and corrupt his teaching, then you are performing something that is terribly harassing. And please, please turn your phones off because it's disrespect for the Quran, not me. I'm nothing. The Quran is everything. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. There's no secret. Almost any dictionary encyclopedia reveals the word Isa is derived from a pagan goddesses. Shukran. Thank you, sir. It shows that the word Isa comes from the name of an old Teutonic goddess of spring. Scholars admit that Easter is the deriv deriv derived of the word Estro, an Anglo-Saxon spring goddess, for more than a thousand years before the birth of Isa. So they were practicing this before Isa was born. A thousand years ago. Before Isa was born, they were practicing what they call Easter. It was the seizing of budding of new life, the seeing the resurrection of the nature of the dead winter. It was a feast or regeneration. Throughout the inhabited world of ancient times, spring festivals and were observed during the honor of the sun's return, welcoming rays once again. So Easter is really a time of regeneration of the earth, not of our dear prophet Isa alayhi salam. Praise be to Allah, Allah wa Akbar. So we want to bring clarity here because we have family. We have family. Now, there's something that really uh, got, uh, I got upset. I had to calm down when I read that. And then I said, why are they having all the... Now, Sunday morning, all of our little nephews and nieces are going to be in the church. Believe me, I know. And they're going to have things called Easter egg hunts. All kind of different things. They are really corrupting our youth without... Because the youth don't, youth don't have knowledge. So they're not responsible but we are responsible because we have knowledge. Once you come into ilm, you are obligated to do da'wah. If you have no knowledge, then you excuse. But Allah says through Prophet Muhammad that we should seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. So that's no excuse. Point being that little children are going to be going on Easter egg hunts on Sunday. Point being that our relatives are going to be dressing up in their Easter bonnets on Sunday. Spending money having our children participate in a ritual that is pagan. I can't find a softer word for it. I'm just giving it to you straight up. I love my Christian brothers and sisters, but I reject what they propagate. No. Allahu Akbar. Now, it's important that we, as Muslims, embrace our relatives. This is going to go on until Sunday. We should have conversation with our relatives. We should embrace them. And we should understand that this has nothing to do with true Christianity. This was imposed on ignorant Christians through the pagans. Pagans are very much alive in America. Don't fool yourself. Read the Quran. Anytime you propagate deities, that's paganism. They hide behind the shroud of Christianity. But it's paganism. And pagans are unclean, filthy, spiritual people. That's, that's the definition. Because they put other gods in front of who? Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to understand when Muhammad Sassanam was in Kaaba, there was over 360 gods in that Kaaba. A god for every day, every day of the year. People still practice that. Hinduism. There's a lot of people that practice Hinduism. We say as Muslims, la ilaha illallah, no God except Allah, no power, no deity, nothing. That's a monotheistic religion. Ibrahim alayhi salam is the father of all monolithic religions. Christianity, pure Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Abu Ibrahim, father of many. That's what it means. So, we have to have compassion for our relatives that are Christian. We shouldn't disrespect them, but we should try to enlighten them at the same time. Ask them questions. What does a rabbit have to do with... Yes, yeah, she left. What does a rabbit have to do with Jesus Christ? Think about it. Question them politely. What does jelly beans have to do with 
Alayhi Salam, Prophet Isa. What does a chocolate bunny have to do with Isa Alayhi Salam? Those are questions we should ask. It has nothing to do with the religion. It has everything to do with pagan concepts. Allah says here in the Quran, inshallah, I want to conclude. He speaks about our brothers and sisters in the deen. He speaks about Al Islam and Christianity. Allahu Akbar. <coughs> Allah says, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Ila Dina Aminu Wadina Hadu Nasira. وَصَبِينَا مَنْ بِلَاهِ يَمُوا أَكِيرًا وَأَمَلَى صَلِهِنْ فَالَهُمْ Allah says here, those who believe in the Ladina Aminu in the Quran and those who follow the Jewish scriptures huh? and the Nasirians, the Quran doesn't call them Christians, it calls them Nasirians. Nasirian means helpers. And those who followed the Jewish scriptures and the Christians and the Sabians, there was a group of people called Sabians during the time of Prophet Muhammad. There's some still around. Brother called me and, and told me about it. I didn't know it. There's some still around. And any who believe in Allah in the last day and work righteousness shall have their reward with their Lord. On them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. So what is Allah saying here? Allah says if you believe in the Quran and you do good, those who believe in the Torah, Musa alayhi salam, and you do good. Those who follow Isa alayhi salam, and do good. Who believe in Allah in the last day, Yamul Akira. All of us will face Yamul Akira. Every one of us. And work what? Righteousness. We come right back to righteousness. The first part of the kuppa, I said good deeds. Allah says, they shall have, on them shall be their reward, on them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. So Allah is saying that whatever you identify with, if you claim to be Yahudi, you follow Musa alayhi salam, you do good, you get jacked. That's what he's saying. So it depends on what we identify with. Allah is so merciful, Rahman Rahim, Rahman Rahim. He's so merciful that he allows you to come to him from different doors of Ibrahim alayhi salam. From Christianity, from Judaism, from Islam. As long as your word is right, I talked about it earlier, the heart. Allahu Akbar. That's how merciful Allah is. I don't care how you get to me, but if you get to me correctly, I'll give you Jannah. Can I prove this? Absolutely. The Prophet Muhammad, when he made the ascension, 17th surah, Bani Israel, read it. The Prophet made the ascension to the seven levels. Right? He ascended. He led all the prophets in Salah. The prophet said that Allah allowed him to look over in Jannah. And what did he see? What did the prophet say? He said in Jannah he saw Nasirians, Christians. He saw Yahudis. He says, but in the greater number were Muslims. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That's powerful. Yes, that's powerful. We were in greater numbers. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad or Rasulullah. But some of them went too. We have to understand that. We have to understand that. And we have to be like our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to be tender hearted. This kutbah is about your heart. Examine your heart. Look into your heart. Let shifa, as shifa, let the, let the healing come into your heart and cleanse away all your diseases. If you're jealous, you're suffering a disease. If you're arrogant, you're suffering a disease. And it's not in your brain, it's in your heart. As-salamu alaykum. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Yashadu an la ilaha illallah. Yashadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. Ayya la salam.